Tonight on Paranormal Hunters, we're off to the old Guildford Jail. From 1867 to 1969, the Colonial Jail was the lockup for petty criminals awaiting trial or serious offenders awaiting transport to Perth or Fremantle jails. Also on these grounds, we'll be checking out the Taylor's Cottage. This was the home of the Taylor family in the early 1880s and today stands as a great example of what life would have been like for our early settlers. My name's Ivan and tonight I'm joined by Darren and Andy and uh, we're looking forward to getting down and checking this place out. Yeah, it should be a good night, can't wait. Right, so we're here with Paul Bridges, the curator of the Guildford Historical Society and we're standing outside the old historical Guildford Jail. Um, so how long have you been at the Historical Society, Paul? Oh, a bit over six years now. Yeah, yeah. And um, you were telling us earlier that this is the uh, footprint of the old jail. Yeah, this is the footprint of the original uh, building that was built here in 1841 by a guy called John Wellborn, and it had two cells and a constable's room. That was uh, the, uh, this was the first government building in Guildford, and it also served for all government purposes like the post office and, and any, any government inquiries came through this building. Then in 1851, an extension was made onto the building, uh, a, a, a large L-shaped extension, uh, and the, the lower part of the L was converted to police quarters, and the, uh, the other portion up here became seven cells. So if this, this building, this uh, doorway here, is the original door from 1851 of cell seven. So when we go through this, this door, uh, the rear of the cell's been knocked out and it's now the corridor to the new set, new four cells. Yeah. So, in 1866, extensions were made to the, uh, this, this part of the, the jail, uh, and four new cells of a different configuration were built. And one of the things that you might like to note is that the earlier cells had a beam across the top, and someone tried to hang themselves off the, off the beam, by cutting their, um, or tearing their blanket into strips uh, and then tying it around their neck and standing on their toilet bucket and then doing the, the literal kick the bucket from underneath them. Uh, however, the, uh, the policeman's wife heard the gurgling noises and uh, came and cut the man down and he still lived. That's crazy. Yeah. So this um, jail was mainly for um, petty criminals and offenders that were waiting transport to Perth or Fremantle? Well, it, it, it's, we call it a jail, but it was, was in fact a police lockup because it was uh, administered by police. Yeah. Uh, and a jail is run by, by prison warders. Yeah. Um, so this is, is largely holding cells for people awaiting their, um, their, their, their trial or, or for when the resident magistrate came and uh, made his determination. Um, and anyone that had a sentence that was longer than two weeks would then be sent to Perth or Fremantle jails. Uh, or if they were Aboriginal, often to Rottnest Island. Uh, so this was just for um, holding cells or for really short-term sentences. Uh, so I believe there's also um, Taylor's Cottage that's on the grounds as well. That's correct. Uh, we'll go and check that out and have a, have a look. Yep, we can slip through the back door. So this is the Taylor's Cottage. Paul? That's correct. Uh, this was owned by um, Edward Taylor who married Emma, who was uh, 20 years his junior at the time, um, and they had 13 children. It's pretty small, isn't it? Ah, oh, very small, but this was pretty much standard for the day. And uh, Ed Edward Taylor was a, a, a convict um, who got a ticket of leave, uh, and then he got his conditional pardon and, 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 and freedom and stayed in the colony. Uh, and he used to sell fruit and vegetables to, um, to the local people, and that's how he sustained his family. I think I was wondering all the people living in this house, how would they have slept in this in these rooms? It's, uh... Well, the, certainly um, at some stage they probably would have um, had a bit of an enclosure on the back veranda. Yeah. And so the boys would have slept out the back. Uh, Mum and Dad and the, um, the younger children uh, and the girls would have all shared a room. And what we've found is that um, often as not there'd be a rope and a curtain um, so that Mum and Dad were separated from the kids. Yep. so that they could produce more kids. <laughs> <laughs> Priorities. Exactly. There's, there's no TV in them days. That's right. Thanks for showing us around, Paul, and opening your doors for us tonight. 
Um, it's, uh, you're doing a fantastic job here preserving our history and um, we've really enjoyed walking around and having a look what what's here to offer us and um, yeah thanks again for opening the doors for us tonight. It's alright, my pleasure. So this is where we've decided to set up our control centre tonight. Uh, you come through here, we'll have a look at the screen. And Darren, where have we got the camera set up? Okay, we've got the first camera facing down the hallway. It's uh, cells are on the right hand side, so we can catch all those. Second camera is in the Taylor Cottage, which is about 100, 200 metres down that way. And uh, I've also got some audio sitting on the table there, so hopefully you can catch some PVPs through there. Third camera is in one of the cells. You can just see the sort of camera there pointing towards the cell in camera one, but that's now camera three pointing into the cell. And you see a back in there, it's not one of us. And uh, camera four is just pointing outside towards the table cottage. So it's pretty much everything covered. Yeah, it's brilliant. Everything's covered there tonight. So let's see how we go. Cool. And what I've got you guys, I want to show you a little thing I've created. I don't know how it's going to go. Now, this is something I've created only recently. I sort of brainstormed the idea. I don't know if it's actually going to do anything, but it might be interesting if it does finally go off and uh, there's nothing in the room. But basically all it does is we've got car reverse sensors built into it and uh, it has a range of two and a half meters all the way around, which it sends out radio waves through the room and if they bounce back at a certain meterage, it'll let us know. So. We've got a camera behind that will pick up the digital readout and it'll let us know not only distance it catches something, but also whereabouts in the room it'll catch it. So it's a matter of just turning it on. And uh, not that you can see the readout at the moment, but it's telling me that it actually is picking up something two and a half metres just over here. Unfortunately, the room's just a little bit too small for this unit altogether. But we can actually, if something comes across the field, it will not only just tell us in the readout, but it'll also give us that audio uh, beacon sound. So it'll be interesting to see if that actually goes off tonight and if we can catch something. It'd be interesting, yeah. Last cell, it's a bit crazy. I mean, it could be just a coincidence, maybe something has moved, but uh, you can see the last cell there, the lights come on. Right, the sun's finally gone down here at the Guildford Jail. So we're about to step inside the front entry and go and check it out. Here? Still not used to seeing these mannequins in these rooms. Yeah. <laughs> Is anyone still stuck at the old Guildford jail who would like to speak? Since this was the light that went off in this cell, and we've covered all the sensors with towels, and um, unexplainably this light went on. You want to go and spend a bit of time in here on your own? Okay, let's do it. Well, we're locking you in. No, no, that's all right. You don't have to do that. <laughs> <laughs> we're shutting the door at least. <laughs> no, go on, lock, lock the door. Lock him in. See you soon, eh? Alright. Should be fine there for a little while. Alright. We'll 
we'll start with some EGP work. These are heavy doors, aren't they? Is there anyone in here with me? If there is, speak louder so I can hear you. Her names are Ivan and Andrew. Oh, you mean no harm. We're just coming here to communicate with you. And hopefully give you an opportunity to make contact with us. And give you an opportunity to let us know something or give us a message. Now's your opportunity to step forward. And let us... That Ooh. was cool. That was cool. Mm -hmm. Was that you? Can you do that again? Whoa. Whoa. Is that the most you've ever seen go off? It's pretty cool. Was that you? Can you give us one beat for yes and two beats for no? Are you male? Whoa. Whoa. Is that the most you've ever seen go off? It's pretty cool. Did you spend time in this cell? Are you innocent? Are you guilty? Are you guilty? Yo, Darren. Yeah. You alright? Yeah. I mean, he told him. Yeah. So we, um... He was letting me out now, it's yeah. very quiet. Oh, uh, we, um... We had the REM pod going off yeah. in one of the cells where the mannequin is. Yeah, it was yeah. awesome, wasn't it? Mm. Just started <laughs> going off. I've been seeing off go off like that before. That's good. Yeah, Andy was a bit taken back, but we were nowhere near it, obviously. Yeah. Sitting there asking questions, next thing, <laughs> just <laughs> <the> <laughs> once. No, 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 it went off like fireworks. <laughs> Uh, it's very quiet in here. <coughs> well, well we, possibly. Yeah, but that was cool, wasn't it? I'm getting like a bit of the chills actually talking about it. That was awesome. Yeah, in through here, Darren, we had the REM pod set up on the bed next to this mannequin. Mm -hmm. I was kneeling down here, Andy was in the corner here. And I was, we've put it down there so the camera gets it now. Yep. Had it right next to the mannequin there. I'd asked, I put my hand near it like we do. Step, sat away and Andy was sitting here. Next thing, out of nowhere, after a little while. Beep, 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 beep. <laughs> That's cool. No reason for it. No. Well, it just doesn't go off like that. That, that, that um, mannequin's probably the creepiest out of the lot. There you go. Is that you?
Might hurt you. Are you still inside this cell? There you go. Is that you? There you go. Is that you? set up this laser grid. I'm going to point it into the cell that all the uh, action seems to be happening with the REM pod and uh, hopefully we can catch possibly any movement. And we've also got the still camera um, set up into that cell as well. That was pretty cool, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. It's like it's all happening in that one cell. Let's let the camera roll and see what happens. Right, we're going to go inside the Taylor Cottage and check it out. Do some EVP work. Um, Andy's also got the REM pod. And the EMF detector. So uh, we'll go inside and check it out. Let's do this. Is anyone here? Well, does anyone still reside in this cottage? Can you tell us how many people used to sleep in this bedroom? Right, we seem to be getting a lot of outside noise. Aeroplanes, trains, cars, people coming back from the pub. So we thought we'd get the spirit box out. It's a bit of a louder device. And hopefully it might cut through some of the, uh, the uh, noise that we're getting from outside in the cottage here. So we'll give it a shot. Is anyone here? Can you tell us your name? Can you tell us your name? Sure. <laughs> right, our names are Ivan, Andrew and Darren. Please step inside this room and come and speak to us. Andrew. This is Andrew. And come and speak to us. Andrew. This is Andrew. Okay, we're going to check out the magistrate's office now and do some EVP work in here and uh, see if someone inside here may want to uh, communicate with us.
Hello, Judge, are you still here? I've been convicted of a crime. Am I innocent or guilty? Okay, our names are Ivan, Andrew and Darren. We're here tonight to hopefully make contact with you. We're coming here with respect and mean no harm. We'd like to give you the opportunity to communicate with us through our devices. Were you transported from this jail to the Fremantle Jail? So that's it from us tonight. Till next time, we'll catch you around another historical location in WA. See you soon.